So when we talk about these shadows and what these shadows are, the shadows are things we've pushed into our subconscious. It's not that we're not really kind of computing and we're not really engaging with. So in essential parts of ourselves, like in most people, to some extent or other, the sexuality has gone into the shadow. Like in nature, if you look at people living in harmony with nature, for example, living in a uh, tribes you know in in the jungle where everyone walks around naked and is completely comfortable with themselves and there's no kinds of like sex crimes and problems and so on uh you can see these people they're not there there's no taboo around sexuality so they're comfortable with it and uh most civilized as we like to call ourselves people have a big taboo one way or another about sexuality and it doesn't matter if you've gone to whatever tantra workshops or you know sex sexuality things um to really really like get bring it into your conscious and into your whole existence because we are made out of sexual energy sexual en energy literally permeates through every cell in our being and unless we're actually integrating this all and taking the gift from this sexual energy, in which case we'll be noticing that we are full of energy, full of vitality, that we are um, very abundant, that things in our life are going really beautifully. Um, we are just not going to be living up to our potential, essentially. So looking at anger, and of course, we're told there's negative emotions, there's positive emotions, the positive is good, the negative is bad, we should be all happy, 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 da, 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 da. the anger needs to be repressed, if you show your anger, you're such a bad person, right, and this is what we're all being told, whether you look from spiritual to psychological to tantra as well, like most tantra, neo-tantra, let's say, you know, they teach people to, for example, beat their anger out on a pillow for example this is still rejecting a part of yourself you know if you think okay the only way to deal with the anger i need to scream it out on top of the mountain this is the equivalent of thinking that you need to deal with your sexual energy by masturbating it out to pornography or something it's not embracing this part of yourself and this is you we feel anger we feel fear we feel shame and shame is another really big one and i'm feeling like today I want to really look into shame and the dynamic of shame and the way that shame just casts this whole cloud over everything in our lives and stops us from just being able to move forward and to progress and it affects our, our very actions, you know, every action it affects the way we go through life. It keeps us stuck in really uncomfortable, miserable situations that we absolutely do not need to be in. But because part of shame is denying the whole dynamic of what's going on, we don't even, we aren't even in acknowledgement of it. And I would say it's the same thing with anger that when we're not in acknowledgement of and recognizing our anger, what happens is it rises up and basically it, um, just takes over and that's when people are getting rages and so let's start off by looking at anger and I'm actually wearing green which is the color of anger and I particularly like this shade of green um and looking at like what is anger and how does it um basically like how does it um uh play out in the body now looking from the Taoist perspective okay essentially we have five organs, which each contain what we call a spirit. So a spirit is basically a desire or an aspect of the personality. Okay, now just bear in mind what we're talking about here. I teach this in a program, which first of all, there's like a minimum of like a five weeks, depending on what speed you do it at. There's a minimum of five, first five weeks of working on the emotions. And then going into the deeper level of working with how the emotions are interacting with the sexual energy, that's a second five week period. So obviously I can't explain all of this, you know, in, in, in one evening. And plus it's really important and essential to sit down, do the work and do the practices to alchemize the emotions. So if we're not actually working on and alchemizing the emotions, uh, the theory is great, yeah, but it, it's by putting it into practice that we actually get the results out of it. So bearing in mind, we have these five, what we call the five main organs, each with their spirit, right? Okay. 
And just to explain, like the most easy to understand is the heart. I'm sure you've heard me talk about the heart. The heart gives us the desire to connect with other people. And we can really tangibly feel that. And that gives us the feeling of love, of, you know, of happiness and joy when we feel that connection coming from the heart. That is the purpose of the heart. Okay. Now, when we look at the liver, right, and we say in Chinese medicine, the heart is like the emperor and the liver is like the general. Okay. So the liver contains a spirit that gives us the desire to create in this physical world. Okay. So you could go back, you know, thousands of years to our ancestors and literally see how the ancestor has the desire to build a house, you know? Okay. And this is coming from the liver. Or maybe us here today, we have a desire to have a career, run a marathon, uh, paint a painting, anything creative. So the liver gives us that creative drive that's very much attached here to the physical real world. And now whilst many spiritual traditions may say transcend, bypass, come all up into the higher chakras and so on, but then so many of these spiritual people are having problems with their bodies, problems with their sexual energy, can't even find two 20 pound notes to rub together. And this is, it's not ideal because at the end of the day, we are spiritual beings, right? I don't deny, and I do believe we all know we're spiritual beings, but we're spiritual beings that are here on the physical plane, having this life and this existence where our purpose is to live the human experience, live the physical experience, and live the physical experience in a physical world and in a physical body, which isn't just a mistake or an accident that needs to be drugged and get sick because there's something flawed and wrong with it and there's faulty DNA and so on. Looking at our body in terms of this um, tradition, everything in our body is perfect. The fact we have these five spirits, so the kidneys giving us drive, the lungs connecting us up to the spiritual realms, the spleen giving us balance and centeredness, as well as obviously the heart making us wanting to connect. This is all what being human is about. And when we manage to understand what these different uh, functions and roles are all about and actually start to be able to, um, um, to use them properly, that's when we really, really, really can step into our power. And I wrote a post yesterday about there's this story of Kublai Khan sort of kidnapping this Taoist monk and forcing him to <laughs> teach his kid or his nephew or something, you know, the different Taoist arts, which may well be based in truth. You know, certainly the, the Japanese emperor literally sent his top general into the Wudang Mountains to take the scrolls here yeah, from the Taoists. And you think, well, wow. How powerful is this that an emperor who believes he's the most powerful person in the world sends his top generals to get these scrolls that literally contain like this blueprint to live life just in the most human, beautiful, juicy, incredible way possible? Because Taoism is about absolutely getting in touch with our body, refining the body, like having more pleasure having better sex. And all of this is about making our body healthier, literally rejuvenating our body and actually reversing aging, feeling better, manifesting abundance, having an amazing sex life. This is all what Taoism is about. And it's all, I guess the, the understanding is that these things are all given to us by the divine and that they're all about uh, this is what, what we are actually here to do. We're not here to bypass and pretend we're off in the spirit realm. We're going to die and we're going to end up back in the spirit realm and we can enjoy the spirit realm there. But while we're here, we have these special experiences, having a physical body, physical pain and having emotions. So taking us back to our liver. So this general that's giving us creativity, causing us to manifest here in the physical world. Imagine our ancestor way back then building their house, right? And then someone comes along and smashes the house up, right? Or maybe you as a kid making your little toy house and someone comes along and kicks it down, right? And what's the natural movement of energy? Because our ancestors would not have survived yet with the mentality that we have today. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know, 
anger is an upward surge of energy. It's an upward movement of energy. And what we think of anger, flying into a rage, kicking off and so on, this is not anger in its pure form. This is the result of repressing and pushing the energy down, the energy rising up and creating a dissonance where instead of being able, for example, to create healthy boundaries and say no and so on, we then fly into this rage because we don't know how to deal with the anger. We don't know the appropriate way to actually get into a relationship with. And I mean, this was a big thing for me, but I think it's a big thing for so many people, especially women, because um, when we're growing up, I think especially as women were taught it's unacceptable to be angry. But I found like my mum would say to me, you're so angry, you're such a bad person, you know, when I was little and I'm like, oh my God, what's this anger thing? How am I going to repress it, you know? And then I went from being really sort of like timid and subdued to then being like kind of the opposite and yo-yoing between these two personality types without actually connecting in to that energy, obviously being like demonized and so on along the way. And what happened was I became a teenager and a an young adult with no ability to say no, no autonomy over my own body, no awareness of my uh, boundaries and what I was okay with and what I was not. Uh, no surprise, I had a lot of sexual problems as well as other kinds of problems. And uh, um, I just see the, the the comment here, Elliot saying all he was allowed was to be angry. And this can be the case for many men that they're only allowed to be angry and not other emotions. But the point is, we're talking here about needing balance, you know? Now for me, it took a moment and I'll be honest about this. It took a moment where I was almost date raped by someone, um, but it was a situation where I'll be completely honest. I didn't have healthy boundaries. I didn't actually say to the person, no. And I was too scared to say no because I was um, I had just been brought up and taught my whole entire life that I shouldn't say no, no is bad, you know? And anyways, luckily I got out of the situation before it got worse than it could have gotten. But understandably the next day I was livid, I was furious. I contacted the person and asked, you know, what do you think you were doing and so on. He claimed he didn't really understand why I what I was complaining about, well, Maybe he should have, but the point is, I never said, cut this out, yeah, you know, I never was clear as well, because I didn't have healthy boundaries, I didn't have a good relationship with my anger, and I noticed this with female clients, right, when we start working on the sexual energy, until we get into the anger, which can go back lifetimes and generations, where women have been put into positions, right, where they are actually often in receipt of sexual treatment they don't want. And this can go on in a perfectly happy, acceptable, nice marriage that the, the husband is having sex with a woman in a way that's not in alignment with her body and soul. In fact, it's very common with the way that um, uh, I suppose the fact that there's just a massive ignorance around sexuality. So, um, you know, helping my it's especially the female clients but it can definitely be with males as well because whether it's been the fact of uh not being allowed to be angry maybe you grow up with a very very angry person and you're always being the timid person which means that energy in your liver is getting stifled it stops you from being creative it stops you from really being able to shine and be yourself and having those healthy boundaries, which really allow you to be your beautiful, pure, juicy self. So what I started to learn, first of all, through the practice of Taoist inner alchemy, and I'd like to just introduce you to a few of these alchemical practices. Like I said, these Practices, they need to be done in a certain order. They need to be practiced over a period of time, generally, in order to get uh, benefits from them. However, um, there, there are some hacks, because that's essentially what these are. These are hacking into the energy field, hacking into the body, and basically being able to, uh, to uh, master control, cultivate, refine, uh, um, transform, store energy, and so on. 
Okay, it might sound a little complex, but it's actually something that anybody can do. Okay, so who here knows where their liver is? Give me a one in the chat if you know where your liver is. Do you know what your liver looks like? Do you know what size it is? Does that sound familiar? Give me a one if you have no idea what your liver looks like, where it is. <laughs> Maybe it's up here. Give me a two, please. Uh, no shame about this, by the way. Uh, so um, people are, so the liver is the largest organ in the body, right? Okay, and it's here on the right. I'm dyslexic, so I can't tell left from right, but I got that right. <laughs> it's here on the right and it's big, right? So it's actually, in fact, the reason the heart appears to be on the left is because the liver is so big and it kind of pushes the heart over, right? Okay. In fact, if you just find your, your bottom of your rib cage, you can even push in up there and you can sort of touch your liver, right? Which is pretty cool because in Taoism, we're very visceral about getting in touch with our organs as much as we can. Okay, so the liver is corresponding with the element of wood. Okay, so just think of a jungle growing, right? And sometimes you can see these plants growing and every day there's like an extra foot growing. Yeah, and this is that upward surge when the rain comes down in the spring and the plants start growing. And you can see a little plant, like a little seed, literally breaking through stone and breaking through tarmac. This is a powerful energy, even though at the same time, it's very soft, it's very beautiful. Okay, now, bearing in mind that most of us have been grown up, being given a very dysfunctional relationship with this really important energy. And by the way, if you find yourself suffering with fatigue and tiredness and so on there's a good chance your liver energy is somehow being repressed and blocked and if you're going to say to me i never feel anger that is a massive red flag because if you've repressed your anger so bad so far so well i should say that you can't even connect with that energy is is not a good thing it's not a healthy thing these emotions are there for a reason and we need to experience them in balance and really repressing the anger also affects our sexual energy because the two are really closely interlinked as well. Because if you think as a man, when you get your erection and it beautifully rises up there, you know, it's like a tree and it's a similar energy and, and we need the two energies to be able to work together. Now, okay, another question here in the chat. Who finds anger scary? Please give me a one. If you find anger a little bit intimidating, scary, you don't quite know what to do with it. You're, it's a little awkward. Don't worry. Most people do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, what do we think anger is? Anger is smashing something up, hitting someone, losing it, right? Okay. <laughs> Anger is, we're thinking here of rage. Yeah. What rage is, is the energy is coming up, we're pushing it down and then it explodes. Yeah. I, I am very in touch with my anger. I feel anger a lot, but most people would say you don't seem to be angry, right? Okay. At all. Yeah. Anger is not about being angry. You know, it's not about screaming and shouting. It's not that you need a person to shout at to be able to express your anger. And this is actually what I realized on that day. And it was it went over for about three days after this, when I said I almost got date raped on this occasion, right? That I went through this three-day journey into my anger. And I was seeing this pattern of rising into rages, being too timid. It was really coming up to me. I mean, I ended up going on this incredible mental, uh, meditation journey where I actually went back to like a past life where I had like died uh, sort of being tortured to death in like a massive state of rage and taken some of this energy into the future lifetimes you know as well um, but ultimately what came to me suddenly was hang on you've been battling this part of yourself you've been trying to suppress it thinking it's some bad part of yourself why don't you just embrace it and I think that most of us, if we see a kid screaming, standing, crying, wah, 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 tantrum or whatever, what do we do? You know, because I think most decent humans will want to pick the child up, 
hug the child, give them love, you know? And this is what my anger needed. And in that moment, as I took the, the anger and loved it, you know, bearing in mind by this point, I had a certain practice of um, Taoist uh, inner alchemy going on to assist me, you know, I found this massive just transformation of energy inside myself where the anger went from being this dissonance to suddenly being like a really empowering force inside my body. And although I'd heard about boundaries and the concept was intellectually put there in my mind, this was the first moment I was like, wow, I really actually um, feel boundaries. And it was like this energy filled my being. And suddenly I had boundaries without almost having to battle to kind of protect myself because this energy is powerful and I'm sure we all know people who have healthy boundaries and you kind of get a feeling from them you know where to go and where not to go right and boundaries is one of the gifts of anger but there's more gifts as well okay and one of the another of the gifts which in a sense I find is like the most important gift inside of anger is creativity you know, so if you imagine, I don't know if any of you have been surfing, but I'm sure that you know of the fact this thing called surfing exists. You've probably seen someone jump on a surfboard, go on the wave, you know, the wave bring them along. And if you imagine that wave is anger, right? And we can try and push it back and we can battle it. But if we jump on that wave, and I'm talking here about transformation and transmutation. And when I, when I speak here of anger, when I speak here of love as well, I'm not talking about an abstract concept. I'm not talking about buying someone a bunch of flowers. I'm not talking about smashing up somebody's car or whatever, right? I'm talking about an actual energy inside of the body. And when we go into this process of transforming and transmuting, we actually start to, uh, the energy changes. And when we go with love into anger and really give love to the anger and love transforms everything, which obviously this is the message of Jesus that love transforms everything. When we engage in this alchemy, we actually start to uh, find that the anger, and you know, sometimes when I've been creating the most stuff, if you guys know me, you probably know I'm an extremely creative person. When I've been working on the most deep projects, sometimes I've been, the universe has bringing, been bringing up very, very difficult situations for me that naturally cause me to feel very angry. But I, because I found the ability, instead of trying to repress the anger down, which would have just shut down my creativity and my projects, I actually found a way to nurture with love and then go and create. And the feeling you get with this, what you get from it is just absolutely amazing and incredible. So let's practice some alchemy. So can I ask for a two in the chat? Who actually knows what love energy is? Yeah, so I see somebody here has made a beautiful comment. So uh, vulnerable and honest. I love it. I'm scared of my own anger because it is blind to everything and destroys everything in its path. When we don't know our anger, what happens is we're denying it, we're pushing it down, and then it flies up and we're not in control of it. When we know our anger, that doesn't happen anymore. Okay, so, right. Let's practice some alchemy. And just to explain the basics of how Tao practices work is what we do is we cultivate energy, we move energy, transform energy, refine energy, store energy. It's very simple. And these skills can be learned by anybody, but they must be learned in a way where we're going step by step by step by step, right? Now, when our body is all full of like blocked up energy, right? And we're not saying... The, the negative is bad and the positive is good, but we, we don't know how to deal with the negative. That's the only problem. What's the problem is when we have this energy getting blocked and stuck inside the body, what happens is we get sick, we get pain, 
and then we go numb. And that's the worst place when we go numb. And we're seeing this coming out as different kinds of sexual problems, not being able to connect with the sexual energy. Because when all these emotions and all these blockages are cleared out, we are in pleasure in our body and we can just breathe our way into multiple orgasms without any tight squeezes of the perineum or whatever, which frankly are quite dangerous if you have not really uh, grown and cultivated your skills with energy. When we just manage to open the body up, then we really start to just actually experience our pleasure. And that's what this is all about, what we're going to be talking about over the next three days. So. Let's take the first practice. Now, we all know where our attention goes, the energy flows. I'm sure you've heard that. And basically, um, the, the, um, we can direct energy in this way. So you can imagine this, any of you, if you're new to this idea, imagine you walk into a train station and you see someone staring at you. And you're going to feel weird and you're going to feel awkward and you get that uncomfortable feeling because they are projecting energy at you. Yeah, if you walk into the same train station, the same person is there and they're looking at you with a smile, you'll get a completely different feeling. And when we start working with energy cultivation and so on, we are doing powerful exercises. So this is not stuff to play around with. It's stuff that needs to be treated with respect and done properly because it's so powerful. Do it in incorrectly and you can harm yourself. You can cause harm to yourself. It's really important. I've even heard someone mention to me about a Tai Chi where they were going to like 10 days of Tai Chi and everyone cultivated loads of energy, but it ends up just everything getting really weird because they hadn't actually been cultivating like, you know, balanced energy, I suppose to say, right? Okay, so we can all very, very... Um, simply start to grow and cultivate energy in our heart. And I would say this is a safe exercise any of you can start with right now, okay? So hopefully you know where your heart is and actually the heart meridians, they come out in the palms, yeah, which is pretty cool. So if we kind of put our hands over the heart and just get this like nice sense of connectedness into this beautiful, amazing organ that just beats away without us even knowing, without us saying anything, literally, pumping the lifeblood around our body and just feeling gratitude for this organ that's you know central to our existence and being alive and as you do this just shut your eyes and you can notice that although the eyelids are shut you still can see so if you want to be able to turn to cultivate the energy let's turn and let's visualize and move our gaze inward so let's just look inside look into the brain look down into the mouth down the throat into the chest and into your heart and then smile to your heart and as you smile into your heart, just get the feeling of absolute love and acceptance. So whoever you are, whatever weird, quirky oddness you have, whatever anyone's bullied you about, you know, whatever you feel is wrong with you, just give yourself complete acceptance, complete love, and know that you are perfect. And smile through your heart as if you're smiling to an old, long-lost friend. Sending that love into the core, the center of your being. And as you do this, visualize a fire and that you're connecting with the fire element and feeling this beautiful red energy growing inside of your heart and spreading through your being. And feel this like a red light inside your heart. And just notice what you feel. Whatever comes up, you may feel a beautiful, relaxed feeling. You may feel bliss. You may feel pain, even physical pain. Whatever you're feeling, don't worry about it. And just invite and be grateful. Feel gratitude for what you're feeling there. 
in that center of your being. And you've now cultivated energy. So I wanna invite you to just open your eyes and you can put into the chat any comment you might have if you felt anything that you'd like to share. Mm. present alive peace and by the way if you did this exercise for the first time and you felt something unpleasant you've actually had something very very powerful happen in fact it's when uh it's when you um when you do these exercises and there's a negative response that can mean you're actually having the most powerful results so it's so beautiful to see all these results coming up that people are putting. Yeah, someone felt a pain there. And that's a powerful, powerful thing. And I'll just say, when I do my coaching with my clients and some people that come into the program, when they have had all this spiritual background, right? And they've done years of, you know, all this kind of being spiritual and they think they've completely overcome their anger. Sometimes those are the people that, have the most crazy anger coming up in the first few weeks because all that they repressed is coming up and I do believe the soul knows it's only pushing out what it knows we can deal with you know so when this this stuff that's difficult is coming up it's because the soul knows a certain amount of work has been done you know and this stuff needs to be released it needs to be um it needs to be freed. But while we're in what is actually the egoistic state of saying, I never get angry. I'm so spiritual. I'm so perfect. You know, these are all egoistic states that are not in alignment with our true self. And it's only when we fully come into alignment with really, really what we are with our true self that we can actually really experience our purpose. So yeah. Um, and I think just as we go more and more through these practices, we start to just notice so many different things come up. And I've been doing this for years. And even this last week, I had a lot of anger coming up. But I remember just it was often coming up first thing in the morning when I was like waking. And I remember just lying in this anger and just embracing it and just having this beautiful feeling. And I have to say, you know, I did this over a number of days and I can have to say, I'm feeling more energized, more alive, more creative, more loving, more beautiful, you know, and this is after years of, of getting in this relationship with this emotion that it still keeps transforming. The alchemy still keeps happening. And I do believe their bodies are here for this reason to alchemize and to transform. So Let's now, this is one of the first forms of, of alchemy, okay, a very powerful form of alchemy. We also have another powerful form of alchemy, which is actually using sound. And if you've been to a sound bath or something, you're going to know um, about the power of this, uh, of sound, what it can do to us. I mean, oh my God, like lying in a sound bath and just feeling like the vibrations filling your body it's just like so incredible you know um but uh basically um we use specific sounds and someone asked me just the other day where do these sounds come from right okay yesterday someone asked me right what's so amazing is and i didn't actually know this but i was at my acupuncturist a few months ago and he was saying there was certain energy blocked in one of my organs and i was like oh yeah okay so i need to go and make a certain sound and he's like oh yeah from the Nijing yeah which is a book that was allegedly written four and a half thousand years ago where they said certain sounds vibrate in certain organs right now how some of this stuff was known yet it's mind-blowing like how they figured this stuff out but I can only say that way back then without tvs and computer games and all the distractions we have like mobile phones people would sit and they would have so much awareness of their body that we don't have that they would that they would be able to like figure this all out and basically be able to start working with their body so whether you're looking at tai chi qigong this kind of inner alchemy practice which is a form of qigong 
we can see powerful transformative effects. Now, I'm just going to say that with working with working with anger with clients it's often we're spending a few months working on it to really get the process going so don't worry if you're you know still feeling confused i really just want you to know that we are uh, that this is possible and that we can come into this beautiful aligned relationship with anger or any other emotion and that we will only feel better as we are doing this so there's a sound, each organ, each emotion has a sound and there's a beautiful, powerful sound and alchemical process for the liver. So let's just do the same thing. Place the hands over the liver, shut the eyes, look within as we did before and find that beautiful visceral organ, our liver and feel the way that it's here to guide us in the physical world and to literally allow us to walk our destiny here in this earth. And let's smile. And we can also send love to the liver. You can send love anywhere. And let's connect now with the green energy of the liver. And let's also connect in and accept any of these beautiful negative emotions, which are these powerful sources of gifts and energy. So feelings that might include frustration, passive aggression, anger, rage, jealousy. And let's really accept the fact that we feel these feelings and these feelings are really okay. And as we're focused in the liver, we're gonna try to make a sound, which is just shh. So it's the, the quiet sound, shh, S-H-H-H. -H -H. Okay, so just smiling, focusing into your liver, really bringing your attention there. Make the sound shh in such a way that you're using your intention to actually create a vibration inside of your liver. So, Open your eyes, come back in the space, just feel that green energy and just notice how it felt to do that sound. And I invite you to put in the chat a, yeah, like a valve that lets pressure out. Any comments there? Should we try that again? Let's smile to the liver and make the sound. Shh. Yeah, some sort of resonance in your liver. So it's a soothing sound. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually sounds for each organs and each emotion. And sounds that we can use through the practice of inner alchemy to transform these feelings. So a bit of pain and regret, but also of joy to be connected. And, and this, when we're, like I said, when we get these negative feelings coming up, it's a really, really powerful thing. And... Uh, Felt a throbbing, cool. Yeah, often we feel a vibration, a novel awareness, never felt that. And it's amazing. I mean, Mantek Chia actually says, fall in love with yourself organ by organ, right? And according to Taoist philosophy, in the center of each organ is actually a little baby. And that baby is the spirit, you know? And when we start thinking of our organs like this, it's incredible. I mean, most people go through life and they don't even know what's their spleen or where it is or where's their liver or what does it do or where's your kidneys. And then suddenly the doctor says, you have liver cancer, you have kidney failure. And all the time your liver has been working away and your kidney has been working away and you've never given them any appreciation. You've never connected with them. You've never thanked them and you've never looked at what are they actually doing for you on the physical level, but also on this emotional stroke energetic level. 
And there are literally people, no joke, that have started these alchemy practices and cured incurable diseases that they were supposed to have died of, including a serious incurable heart disease, cancer, and so on. This stuff is so powerful and it actually goes through like every layer of your life. So it's not just going into the, uh, it's not just going into the, um, emotions you know it's not just going into the physical it goes into every aspect of our life and for example when i work with the this with the clients in the sexual energy and sure often the aim of the person is they want to be a better lover they want to be a sex god and so on and so forth and all of this is great i mean i got into Taoism because i wanted an orgasm what happened to me was <laughs> chronic health problems disappeared i got my uh i got my energy back I looked 10 years younger. I didn't just have one orgasm. I started having multiple orgasms. I caught sight and realized what my destiny was. I became a really, really creative person. I, the list can go on and on and on. You know, often when I work with people around their sexual issues, what they find is that they actually end up uh, uh, that their work environment, for example, I work with C CEOs and they find that their work environment actually gets way better. Everyone in work is getting on much better. Their, their uh, employees are sort of uh, responding to them much better as well. So it's a really um, beautiful, incredible, holistic thing that just absolutely spreads into every part of our life because what we're doing is we're going in there and we're creating balance in the physical realm and we're balancing everything out. We're using these practices plus the knowledge of how everything works, the way the different organs feed and control each other to be able to actually, um, uh, to be able to actually um, just get our bodies fun functioning at their optimum. And of course, you probably know about how we Taoists were quite vain, right? We like to look young, we like to look good, you know, and what we're doing is when we can actually sort out this emotional world, Bearing in mind the emotions aren't just in the physical organs, they're also in the sexual organs, we can then start to harness our sexual energy and rejuvenate the body at the cellular level, which is what it's kind of all about, right? You know, like creating this vessel into the most perfect form of itself that it can possibly be and just upgrading it to the ultimate level. Now, I want to take a look at shame, and I'm just wary that I have a battery growing low, but no fear, there's a charger, so we're all good. Okay, so let's have a look at shame, because I think shame is such a big one, and it's insidious, and I think there's a whole connection between self-hatred cruelty towards ourselves and shame and people often focus on shame for women and I think that a, a huge criticism I have about this whole kind of scene working around sexuality is it seems to be a lot more looking at what women need rather than what men need you know well obviously as women we have sexual shaming you know we have shame around the sexuality but I think shame is like a huge huge issue for men and often in ways that, uh, you know, uh, that th it hides, shame hides, you know, and it costs, it costs like a blanket, like a shadow ev over everything, like a mist, and it just kind of dumbs everything down and stops things from working properly. And I mean, the amount of, you know, I mean, we hear a lot about abusive men, right? Yeah. And obviously there's different kinds of dynamics of abuse, but the amount of men I speak to that are in a relationship with a woman where, you know, it's not that the woman's beating them, but the man isn't, there's a dynamic where the man isn't standing in his power and then the woman is kind of overpowering and he's living in fear and shame of this woman. And then he keeps going back, trying to resolve things between the two of them and work things out between the two of them, which is not actually going to happen unless he aligns with his power which will completely change the dynamic of the relationship. But there's so much shame around the fact is normally when this is going on, you're gonna find sexual problems because how can the sexual energy work properly when there's this kind of thing going on? You know, this is gonna be reaching out into every layer and every part of, of their life, you know? And the amount of shame and uh, I think shame is the good word that that is around just going out and doing something 
taking action. I mean, I find it quite crazy even how people are ashamed to be in my Facebook group, for example, you know. On the one hand, I understand it because then I just remember, oh, wow, there's people that actually think like going in a Facebook group like mine, that there's something <laughs> shameful about it, you know, or someone who has like a, for example, um, uh, perhaps some some work they need to do on themselves. And they're so ashamed to be in the house with their partner. They're feeling terrified to kind of talk on the phone and they're unable to literally go, hey, I need some space to chat about this. How can I? get this space and just to literally say this to to their partner which is a really um not a good situation to be in because ultimately we all need to whether you're in a relationship or not we all need to be clear about what is our needs having our boundaries and so on but when there's this shame that you know someone's going to find out something or you know it it just nothing nothing will work properly nothing will function properly and in a sense, we would say that shame kind of it comes from the element of earth. So it comes from the spleen. Uh, it, it it relates to worry, but I would almost say like shame is like a kind of a. So it's a state of shutdown of the whole energy system, because when we're in a state of shame and we can't actually see, oh, wow, OK, I'm not in a good state. So she's giving me a hard time. And instead of me go, standing into my power, stepping back and doing the work I need to do on myself, getting dragged into this relationship, which then becomes like more, more and more toxic, not toxic because of somebody's toxic or it's somebody's fault, but just a toxic dynamic. Because what's going on is one person is acting from trauma, another person is acting from trauma, and the traumas are just banging backwards and forwards without actually stopping and going, hey, how can I do this work on ourselves? How do we overcome shame and guilt? And ultimately it comes down to getting into a relationship with ourselves and getting into a relationship with our bodies because the the shame and guilt is like a kind of an, a dynamic of like everything just being thrown off, everything off balance, everything not working properly. And until we really like are experiencing our body as this incredible alchemical chamber, this absolute perfect vessel for our souls, that it really is when we really experience the sexual energy, not the way that we've been programmed, but actually experiencing it as a spiritual force the force of transformation, the force of consciousness, the force of um, everything that it is, because we can hear the words, we can be told things, but until we actually experience that, which means that the alchemical process is working properly, it, we're not going to be living it. And that's why I say about these practices that it's so important to repeat, create a discipline, and do it because when we're doing that then we just start transforming things happen I can see one or two people here that's had some crazy transformations working together with me um but uh things that you know like when I started this stuff I had no idea what would happen you know it went beyond my wildest dreams what actually started to happen to me and I think this is the feedback I get from clients which is I knew this was going to be cool but I didn't realize the way it was going to change and transform like my whole life. And when it gets actually into the fact that we've been working with the body, we've been working with the organs, we've loosened everything up, we've got things moving and look, you know, it's not that you can never have a blockage. It's not that you can never have any of these bad feelings. These are part of our existence, but there needs to be flow and without the flow, you know, most people's bodies are like a room just full of bags of rubbish and rats and you know you can't even walk through the room in reality you know the sexual energy can't rise up the body we need to clear out the room you know but initially we clear out and we get enough so that we can at least walk through the room and we know how to carry the rubbish bags out from this stage we can then start to clear and move the energy up we can start moving working with the sexual organs so actually going into the points in the sexual organs where the um where the um 
the energies are blocked. And this is kind of where it seems to be like the tightest knot of it, you know? And as I mentioned, I got into this stuff because I'd never had an orgasm and I worked with my organs. I worked with my body. It was super great, yeah. But it was when I went into my vagina that I really started to feel the stuff like releasing out of my body, like over a period of, you know, days, weeks, months, you know, that just completely changed everything inside of my life, you know? So we can kind of maybe start to see a little bit why the emperor of Japan sent his top general to get these Taoist scrolls, you know, because this stuff goes and permeates into every part of our being. It's like having this blueprint for life that basically just explains like exactly how to use it because we've got these amazing incredible high-tech bodies but it's as if we had the most advanced spaceship and we're using it without a manual and all we can do is drive it around like a golf cart and this is what most people are doing with their bodies and I want to share now for everybody who's here that basically I have a way that um uh as you know, I have a program. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, except the fact is I'm taking in applicants for the new set of the program and I have an early bird price on. So I definitely recommend get in touch if you're interested in that. I also have a membership, which means there's a way for you to start doing these practices more slowly, but at a, at a pace where you can also start getting the transformations that people here have had that's literally allowed them to like overcome like actually what would have been sort of diagnosed as as a conditions of, of mental health and physical health as well that allowed these people to overcome in quite a short period of time and really start to like come into their power so I definitely recommend like get in touch to ask me a bit more about how you can get into these practices and um i'd like to just um yeah i don't know if anybody who's done this <laughs> would like to share just to get I, an impression from another person or if you're feeling shy it's fine um but uh Um, I'd like to just open up for any questions now. So you can type in the chat or you can just unmute and ask me any questions or share anything you want to. Hi, yeah, um, I have a question if that's okay. Hi, Jade. <laughs> Um, nice to be here. Um, Are you unmuted there? Uh, I am. Yes, you can speak. Oh, perfect. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So for me, I really found the the smiling and connecting with these organs in the body to be really, really useful and helpful. Would you say that this is something to add to um, daily routine and to add to potentially self-pleasure practices and things like that? Would you say... How often would you say um, using these sorts of practices would be useful? So great question. Like what I recommend to people when they're working with me is to make this a way of life and start bringing this into your life like on a daily basis, because that's how you really start getting it. And when you first do the practices, you're probably going to sit on your own in a dark room and you're going to be like, OK, is that my liver? Is that green energy I can feel, <laughs> you know? quite quickly it becomes something that just is happening and you integrate it and it, it becomes a part of your life you know so I find now I'm constantly feeling the colors feeling the connection with the nature working with my sexual energy and so on you know and I definitely encourage the people that I work with to basically uh, create a discipline around it because you need to create a discipline around it for it to start to work um but I mean, a smile is an incredible thing. It actually lifts up the internal organs just by a millimeter or two, which is what you want everything a bit lifted up because you don't want it falling out down the bottom, right? You know, and it even causes a little pull up of the pelvic floor. So it's a smile actually exercises the pelvic floor because everything's all 
interconnected together. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, it's a way of life. I don't feel like I could live without. I'm doing it, you know, every day, all the time. I wake up and I smile to my heart first thing, you know. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> my pleasure. Hey, Jade. Hey, hello. Hi, uh, I think I should probably, I feel like I should say something because the difference that this has made to my life over the last year has been phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I've gone from being in a place where I don't want to leave the house to being full of life, being happy every day. And yeah, I've got you to thank for that. It's been an amazing journey. And I don't practice as regularly as I should because fitting it in with work, family and everything else can be quite tricky. But I'm starting to see results now, which um, they're starting to blow my mind. Mm. Thank you, Chris. And I have to say, that's what happened to me, as I've said already, and we'll say it again. Like, you know, I was, I had probably not that diff different from you. I was addicted to cannabis. I was anxious. I was suffering with insomnia. I, I was self-medicating with anxiety. So with cannabis, because I couldn't sleep. And basically, um, you know, I had to, uh, I had tried to to sort my problems out with so many different things, so many different techniques. And when I found this, it was like the cannabis thing gone, the back pain gone, the problems with the period gone, <laughs> the the anxiety gone. Like, you know, not that obviously we still have problems and things come up in life, but then we're armed with these tools or we're actually able to just deal with and sort out like what's going wrong energetically in our lives you know um so i don't know where i would be right now if i hadn't find this found this i don't even know if i'd still be alive <laughs> you know i sometimes think but you know i'm just grateful that the universe brought this to me at the time that it did because the minute i saw it i went for it and i built up and i grew with it and, and i got it to, to every class i possibly could um and I developed my skills over a period of years and just completely changed and turned my life around. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely, it definitely has made a, a big difference in my creativity as well has gone mm -hmm. through the roof and so many ideas running around my head. It's just finding time now to implement those and get on with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure with time that will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I definitely the creativity because I've always been creative, but I used to be creative and never finish things off. Whereas now I can bring things to completion, and that's actually the liver that causes us to not be able to finish things off when the liver energy isn't moving properly and working properly. Right, that's mm -hmm. useful to know. Yeah, it's when the liver start working properly, and I think also when I, for example, I stop the cannabis because the cannabis depresses the, the liver as well and it's pushing down the anger and so on you know we make we think we're calm but it's just creating an illusion and then once you've got that natural flow of energy you don't need the thing you've been addicted to before whatever that was you know so for example I find when people have done my program if they had porn addiction within four weeks just lose all interest in the porn it's not that I tell people stop the porn they just lose all interest in it you know so um yeah and this is just what happens when everything energetically starts working inside of our bodies so this is really cool so come back tomorrow i'm not recording the session tomorrow because we're all going to be talking about our personal stuff that's going to just stay between the four walls so to speak you know um so and i'm not streaming out on facebook either so hope everybody can make it via the link tomorrow and do have a great rest of your evening tomorrow and feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Take care. Bye.